Election day is just one week away. And an unusual scandal with significant ramifications for this election is unfolding as we speak in real time. Right now, an investigation is currently underway following an intentionally set fire that destroyed several hundreds of ballots at two drop boxes in the Pacific Northwest yesterday on Monday. Most of the ballots at the drop box in Portland, Oregon remain unaffected, thankfully. However, Hundreds of ballots at another drop box in Vancouver, Washington were totally destroyed in a disgusting fire. Police officers were called around 3 a.m. local time and security personnel extinguished the blaze, which was reportedly started by an incendiary device that was planted on the side of the drop box. But another drop box at a bus station in Vancouver, Washington, just 15 miles away across the Columbia River, also caught fire and responding officers similarly found a suspicious device next to the drop box as it burned up. It should also be noted here that voting in both states, Oregon and Washington, is done almost entirely by Dropbox or by mail, giving potential criminals a relatively soft target to strike should they want to interfere in our elections. Obviously, that doesn't excuse this disgusting attack. Nothing does. There is no excuse for this. And whoever has done this ought to be held accountable to the fullest extent of the law. Such a brazen attempt to compromise the integrity of our elections must not go unpunished. Thankfully, law enforcement agents are actively working to identify the person or persons behind this disgusting attack. But in some other important election news, we've finally heard about Kamala Harris's long list of demands for Joe Rogan should they do an interview on his podcast. Many of us thought she would go on a show sometime soon, possibly last week, and apparently some of her staffers even met with Rogan's team last week. But... Kamala still hasn't done a show, and it was unclear why. That is, until today, when Rogan presented her list of demands. Unlike President Trump, who sat down for three hours without a single break and without even taking one sip of water the entire time, Kamala had a list of restrictions that would greatly hinder Joe's ability to do a thorough interview with her. Firstly, she wanted the interview to be just one hour long, which is absurd. Secondly, she wanted Rogan himself to travel to wherever she will be instead of doing the interview in his podcast studio in Austin, Texas. Also absurd. And thirdly, she proposed to do the interview today, right now. However, it doesn't seem very likely given these proposed limitations. And to his credit, Rogan addressed this matter in a post on his ex count earlier today. He wrote, quote, also, for the record, the Harris campaign has not passed on doing the podcast. They offered a date for Tuesday, but I would have had to travel to her, and they only wanted to do an hour. I strongly feel the best way to do it is in the studio in Austin. My sincere wish is to just have a nice conversation and get to know her as a human being. I really hope we can make it happen. End quote. Well, to his credit, there's still plenty of time for an interview before election day, and she should do it. All political candidates should be required to do long form, unedited, unscripted interviews while running for office, especially for the office of the presidency. And running away from the Joe Rogan experience is rather revealing, isn't it? She wants to be the commander in chief of our country's military. She wants to have access to the nuke codes. And yet she can't even do just one unscripted, unedited interview with an extremely friendly podcaster who wants to get to know her. Talk about shameful and ridiculous. It's absurd. What's also quite ridiculous is Kamala's closing message to the American people. We have just one week to save America and her campaign in a desperate ploy for more power is making this election all about her hatred and vitriol for Republican voters and President Trump. The same can be said of her allies in the legacy media establishment. In just the past week alone, they've compared President Trump to Adolf Hitler, otherwise known as the most evil man in all of human history. And they've painted his supporters as violent extremists. It's completely delusional, totally false, and highlights the fact that today's Democrat party is no longer the party of John F. Kennedy. 
What's more, they continue to attack President Trump simply for hosting a rally at Madison Square Garden on Sunday, and some pundits out there have even described it as a Nazi rally, which is beyond sick and unacceptable. Such claims couldn't be any further from the truth or from reality. So that's why it's nice to see Republicans finally pushing back and debunking those claims. And that brings us to these remarks from former New York Congressman Lee Zeldin on CNN yesterday. Just to give you another perspective of what somebody like me is seeing when you know, Kamala Harris and Hillary Clinton are, are comparing President Trump to Hitler and saying this is a Nazi rally and comparing it to some Nazi rally from the 1930s. And you have an event where you have Holocaust survivors in the arena. You have yarmulkes, people rapping to fill in Israeli flags, multiple Jews speaking on stage. There's outrage of people who are on the other side who have a different perspective. And you know what's really interesting, we, we, we see things with our own eyes and ears. There's different echo chambers that are out there. And I'll tell you, a close, the closing message that I see is President Trump talking about Kamala broke it, I'll fix it. And Kamala Harris, as we saw with the CNN town hall last week, the panel before she started, was really begging her to talk about the economy and the border. And she was talking about Hitler on January 6th. He hit the nail on the head. Well said.